tropical evergreen forest so they found in the regions of heavy rainfall so basically the rainfall is exceeds 200 centimeters so generally the rainfall here exceeds 200 centimeters especially the monsoon rainfall so this characteristic can be realized in areas of western parts of western guards because the monsoon winds are very strong there it receives a lot, a lot of uh, rainfall Good morning students, welcome back to Computer Science. And today is our 40th day. We are studying geography and today's topic is natural vegetation or simply forests of India. Right? So majorly in this lecture we are going to study the different types, different types of forest. And uh, the spread, I mean, the regions where they have spread, and briefly we are going to st uh, study the types of, we can say, flora or trees, and also the fauna or the wildlife that that is uh, found in these type of. Fauna. Right. So this will be the focus of our lecture. So before going into the types of the forest, we will briefly understand the. We can say we will understand the natural vegetation and we can say its significance. Right. So, we have some of the aspects about the uh, natural vegetation in India. Uh, we have understood when we were studying the biodiversity. Biodiversity as well as when we were studying the national parks. And also wildlife sacrifice. So some of the aspects have been covered already in these uh, under these topics. However, we will try to be briefly revise them once again. Right. India is one of the 12 mega biodiversity hotspots globally. Uh, we can say biodiversity hotspots. In the, in globally, we have understood that one is Indo Burma region. Next one is <coughs> Western Guards and Sri Lanka region. Right. So these are the two uh, which hail from India. In the, I mean these are part of the 25 biodiversity hotspots. So India is one of the 12, one of the 12 mega bio. Uh, uh, hottest of the hotspot that uh, those are mega bi uh, biodiversity hotspots in the world. So these two are part of the 20 by uh, 25 biodiversity hotspots in the world. So these are recognized by UNESCO. So when we were studying the environment, we have understood these aspects. So India is one of the well hottest of the hottest biodiversity hotspots. So it has 47,000 plant species uh, worldwide and I mean with uh, India ranks with the 10th worldwide and 4th in Asia in plant diversity, right. India also has about 15,000 flowering plants consisting, consisting of 6% of the total world flowering plants. Similarly, we have uh, India has non-flowering uh, non plants such as paints ferns, algae and fungi, right, these are also abundant in India. Similarly, India has approximately 90,000 species of animals along with rich variety of fish in both freshwater and marine environments. So these are some of the aspects about the biodiversity of India, right. We have studied this already when we were studying the biodiversity topic. However, I thought that it will be a revision for you. Right. Now we will come to natural vegetation. So natural vegetation refers to plant communities that have grown naturally without human intervention. Right. So they have uh, left, similarly those forest areas left undisturbed for a long time 
term th- i mean those forests which have left undisturbed disturb they have known as virgin forest right so this is the definition of natural vegetation so cultivated crops like fruits etc orchids uh, they are generally not considered as natural vegetation so the we can say plantation plantation crops like fruit crops and orchids they do not come under natural vegetation when it comes to india we can broadly divide, divide the natural vegetation into five categories those are tropical evergreen forest uh, tropical deciduous forest tropical thorn forest and scrubs mountain forest and mangrove forest so further this tropical deciduous forest can be divided into two major uh, two sub categories those are wet tropical deciduous forest and also dry tropical deciduous forest so further tropical forest can be divided into two uh, sub groups right so these are the five major categories that are types of forests that are generally found in india now we will discuss uh, in detail about each one of them so before that we will see the spread of these forests so the area which is uh, which is in thick green color this is himalayan forest or we can say mountain forest so the area which is in light green color it is it can be uh, it is classified as uh, deciduous forests or tropical deciduous forests so this region which is in light yellow color we can say it is coon forest similarly uh, this area uh, in the west part of the western ghats and also the northeastern part and also the regions of andaman and the nicobar also they have the tropical evergreen forests right. so rest of the areas here you can see small small portion of right so a small patches of uh, here you can find the mangrove forest so basically they are confined to coast of west bengal odisha andhra pradesh etc so these are mangrove or we also call them as tidal forests so these are the five broadly five parts five major types of forest of india so try to remember the distribution so when you uh, when you you can also relate this map with the climate climate especially the rainfall and temperature so generally the vegetation is dependent on both these aspects rainfall and temperature so try to connect this map with the next um, next aspect that is climate uh, the next lecture is about climate only so there is a lot of relation between the uh, natural vegetation and the climate so basically the type of vegetation is majorly dependent on the amount of rainfall amount of so where generally there is abundant rainfall uh, approximately on 200 degree centimeters sorry 200 uh, 200 centimeters right so those regions are characterized by tropical evergreen forests so you can find western ghats of western part of western ghats and also 
the northeastern himalaya so they receive generally abundant rainfall so there because of that reason the forest type is a tropical evergreen forest further where the rainfall is we can say between 70 and uh, 200 cm varying so there there the regions have deciduous forest deciduous forest further where the rainfall is between 200 and 100 cm there we can see wet deciduous forest and where the rainfall is confined to 100 to 70 cm there we can see dry deciduous forest so wherever the rainfall is even less than 70 cm there we can find the scrub type of or thorn forest right so in the mountain higher mountain regions like himalaya it also the highest parts of the western ghat western ghats also so we find the mountain type of forest so further mountain type of forest can be divided into three minor subgroups we will see them also right so in the tidal areas or coastal areas at uh, some areas we will find the uh, tidal forest or mangrove forest so they are found especially in the eastern coasts and also in some regions of the gujarat also we find the tidal forest right so try to remember these facts about the forest they may be asked in the exam right now we will study about each of the forest in some detail first one is tropical evergreen forest so they found in the regions of heavy rainfall so basically the rainfall is exceeds 200 cm so generally the rainfall here exceeds 200 cm especially the monsoon rainfall so this characteristic can be realized in areas of western parts of western ghats because the monsoon winds are very strong there it receives receives lot a lot of uh, rainfall and also the northeastern part here the east we can say eastern band eastern branch of the monsoon winds they are strong here and because of this uh, meghalaya plateau the canyon like structure so the monsoon monsoon winds are obstructed and this region also receives a lot of rainfall so here also tropical evergreen forest can be found and also the andaman and the nicobar islands area it also receives lot of uh, rainfall so there also we can find the tropical evergreen forest right the regions are western ghats especially western parts of the western ghats lakshadweep andaman and the nicob nicobar islands and also upper parts of assam and the tamil nadu coast so tamil nadu coast also during the we can say winter monsoon or northeastern monsoon monsoon so we will study about the monsoon in the next lecture in detail for uh, for the time being you remember these things so because of the northeastern monsoon the tamil nadu coast receives heavy rainfall so because of this region the moisture is available almost throughout the year uh, except in the few we can say 2 to 3 months of the summer period the moisture is available to the uh, eastern coast of tamil nadu throughout the year so because of that reason also we can find the tropical evergreen forest there in the coast of tamil nadu right vegetation if you see so diverse and lush vegetation can be found including tall trees reaching heights of over 60 meters right so lush vegetation always you can find greenery so there is no particular here in the tropical evergreen forest there is no particular season particular season that the trees are shedding their leaves so this there is no particular season when you see the deciduous uh, deciduous forest and other type of forest so there is a particular season where the leaves will be shed so for uh, we can say one to one and a half month period the trees uh, will shed leaves when it comes to deciduous forest uh, in the summer season in summer season for a brief period the trees shed their leaves to overcome the lack of moisture content or lack of water right so this particular characteristic characteristic is missing in evergreen forest so there is no particular season where the trees uh, shed their leaves so 
uh, in between randomly the trees will be shedding the older leaves and uh, the simultaneously the new leaves will be growing so because of this reason they always look green they always look green because of this reason only they are called as the uh, evergreen forest right so here another another important characteristic of this uh, we can say tropical evergreen forest is multi layered structure with the trees shrubs and creepers so basically we also call, call it as canopy so here this is one layer of ca uh, canopy further there will be another layer of uh, canopy so because trees are very big and very lush there will be a competition among the trees for the sunlight because they uh, they need sunlight to uh, i mean to grow and to uh, to do this photosynthesis right so the next generation of trees they try to overgrow the already existing trees so because of this reason we can say layers of canopy can be fine so this is one layer of canopy and this is another layer of canopy similarly uh, in over in the uh, evergreen forest we can see three to four layers of canopy right so apart from that we will see lot of shrubs who will be growing and also creepers so creepers actually they creep over these long trees and we will we can find many varieties of uh, creepers there and also these are characterized by lush green undergrowth right so these uh, we can say ground area is also characterized by lush green undergrowth uh, uh, because of the availability of moisture content and also because of the uh, organic material because these leaves will be uh, these trees will be shedding leaves continuously and the, there is lot of organic material is available right lot of organic material is available so because of this reason there is lot of lush uh, green undergrowth is also there in this region right so <coughs> because of this reason also another characteristic is there is lot of variety in species variety in tree species right so because of all these reasons uh, the we can say lumbering industry or we can say com for commercially exploiting this region it becomes somewhat difficult because there is no uniformity in the species of uh, trees so we will find a different types of uh, species of trees and also we see lot of dense undergrowth combined with we can say lot of growing of creepers so all these characteristics make the exploitation of the timber for commercial purpose uh, make uh, i mean here will become difficult right all right so another specific reason is no time leaf uh, no specific time for uh, leaf shedding we have already seen this resulting greenery throughout the year so because of this reason also they are called as evergreen forest right so commercially important uh, tree species if we see some of the tree species, uh, tree species found here are ebony mahogany rosewood rubber cinchona these are prominent so especially rubber rubber trees especially we have yesterday we have seen they also grew in the we can say areas uh, kerala region uh, because the soil is also characterized by laterite soil this soil is suitable for replantations right so rubber is also one of the commercial important uh, plant species there from here we harvest natural rubber so because of the heavy downpour downpour the laterite laterite soils are developed here that will lead to development of we can say uh, plantation crops also there right these species all these species they significantly contribute to the economic value for the forest system so apart from the tree species if we see the fauna wildlife what uh, wildlife that is found in these regions is common animals include elephants monkeys lemurs and deer one horned rhinoceros 
that is found in Assam and the West Bengal. So especially the one-hand rhino. Rhino. When we were studying the national parks, we have understood Kajiranga National Park. The National Park and also the Manas National Park. That I mean the we can say key species there is the one-hand rhino. So that is also found in the some regions of Assam and West Bengal. Right. Apart from that, there is abundance of bird species, bats, sloth bears, scorpions, and the snail. They enrich the ecosystem. So there is a we can find a lot of lot variety of fauna, wildlife species there in the tropical evergreen forest. Right. So in the image you can see the tropical evergreen forest. Here, if you clearly understand, you can see the canopy also. So one layer of trees will try to overgrow the other layer of trees because there is competition for, we can say, <coughs> sunlight. Right. So this is a tropical evergreen forest. Next important forest type is uh, tropical deciduous forest. So this particular name suggests that there is a special or particular period, particular period or time period of to one to one and a half month where the all the trees similar at the same time they shed their leaves. Right. So this is this uh, period particularly will be during the summer season. Right. So basically it will be around March to mid April. Right. We can say this is right now we are in the uh, this particular season where the trees are shedding their leaves. If you I mean go out, you can see you can observe that most of the trees or we can say all of the trees they are shedding their leaves and the new leaves are coming. Right. So generally in the western countries they also call it as the autumn season where the trees uh, will shed their leaves. However, there are India there are only three pe uh, peculiar seasons. India is known for three particular seasons. Those are summer, winter, and the rainy seasons. So, if you see the western countries, generally they are they have four seasons. So, autumn, spring will be there, and the summer and the winter will be there. Okay. Right. So, this is the difference between the climatic division between western countries and India. Right. So try to remember this aspect also because you need some clarity when you are studying the climate. Right. So this type of forest is the most widespread forest in India. Right. Because India belongs to arid and semi-arid. Arid and semi-arid climatic. Arid, semi. Semi-arid climatic region. So this for this type of, uh, we can say, climatic regions, arid and semi-arid uh, type of climate, the tropical or we can say deciduous forests are most suitable. They grow more there. So because of this reason, it is the most widespread forest type in India. Right. So they are also known as the monsoon forest. Right. So because in a particular season, in the northwestern monsoon season, the moisture or we can say availability of water is plenty so that they utilize that and try to grow so whenever after the for the rest of the period the availability of moisture or water is less so uh, in that period their growth also somewhat stalls so because of this reason they are also known as the monsoon type of forest so these are generally spread over regions uh, where the rainfall is between 200 to 70 centimeters so they shed their leaves for a particular period it is six to eight weeks in dry summer so basically this ranges from one to two months or one to one and a half months right so further these forest types deciduous, uh, deciduous forest they can be further divided into two subgroups uh, we have already seen that so one type is moist or wet deciduous forest moist or we also call it as wet deciduous forest. So these are found in areas receiving rainfall between 200 to 100 centimeters. So they exist mostly in the eastern part of the country. So that eastern part of the country, as you all know, 
so eastern part of the country it generally receives more rainfall than the western part of the country right so because of this reason the eastern part mostly it has the wet deciduous forest so the states that are that comprise of this forest type are north north northeastern states food hills of himalayas jharkhand west odisha chatisgarh and the eastern to eastern slopes of western ghats so if you see the western ghats on the western part of western ghats we have seen tropical evergreen forest however when we come to the eastern part of western ghats we will find wet deciduous forest because in the eastern parts of the western eastern part of the western ghats the availability of moisture is that uh, i mean to that extent it is less available because it falls on the leeward side of the we can say western ghats the eastern part falls 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 on the leeward side of the western ghats because uh, because of this reason the ava i mean the availability of you can say the rainfall or moisture is less there so this leads to development of moist deciduous forest right so try to remember this difference also uh, to the west part of the himal uh, western ghats we see tropical evergreen forest to the eastern part of the western ghats we will see wet deciduous forest right so these forest types they are uh, dominated by teak so you may realize the importance of teak so it is very very important when it comes to preparation of all the all types of furniture so the uses of teak are plenty immense it is uh, teak is used you can say for every single purpose in our day to day life that is made by you can say timber right so this is the most dominant teak uh, sorry uh, tree species uh, it is also commercially very very useful uh, for the people so these moist uh, deciduous forests they are characterized by the most important tree species that is teak right other commercially important species include bamboos so bamboo also you know it has multiple uses and we are trying to explore further explore the utility utility or use of the bamboos similarly salt trees are there shisham sandalwood right so especially in the we can say sandalwood one type of sandalwood is red sandalwood so this is also can be especially this red sandalwood it is found in the uh, andhra pradesh in the seeshachalam seeshachalam hills of the we can say the andhra pradesh so when we study the uh, we can say dry deciduous forest we will see this all right so kaaket kusum uh, kher sorry kher kusum arjun and other uh, mulberry so these type of forest uh, we can say tree species can be found in the moist deciduous forest next category is dry deciduous forest so here in the image you can see the dry deciduous uh, forest so the it, these are found in the areas where rainfall is between 70 to 100 cm right so they are located in the rainier parts of the peninsula plateau so if you take the peninsula plateau so in the peninsula plateau where the rainfall is comparatively high in those regions we can find the uh, we can say this uh, uh, we can say the, uh, we can find the uh, dry deciduous forest right so some areas cleared for cultivation and others used for grazing right so these are i mean this type of region say this type of forest can be found in the areas of bihar and up uttar pradesh right so the about the red sandalwoods i was saying so it can be found in the wet deciduous forest area so red sandals one type of sandalwood red sandals so especially it is found in andhra pradesh region of uh, andhra pradesh so where uh, the sheshala seeshachalam forests are located so this red red sanders is a very rare species right it is a very rare species and commercially it is very very important special type of musical instruments are uh, being made with this uh, red sanderwoods and also it has some 
मेडिसिनल पर्पसेस सो द एंटायर मूवी ऑफ द फेमस मूवी यू मैट बी नोइंग पुष्पा सो इट इज वी कैन से थीम्ड ऑन द दिस पर्टिकुलर रेड सैंडल्स एंड हाउ दे आर बीइंग स्मगल्ड बिकॉज दोज आर वेरी वेरी कमर्शियली वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्पेसेस so right so this type of forest type is available in the <coughs> all these areas including the eastern parts of the western ghats right so when it comes to dry deciduous forest it is available in the bihar and uttar pradesh regions where the we can say in the peninsular region itself where the temp, uh, where the rainfall is somewhat more so especially we can find this forest type uh, where the rainfall is between 70 to 100 Right. So the tree type here include teak. So teak here also we can find one of the important we can say uh, commercially very very important tree species. Apart from that, we can find sal, peepal, and neem trees here. Right. Okay. This is about the deciduous forest. Right. So if you see the fauna here, wildlife that can be found here is. I mean, in the entire we can say deciduous forest. Deciduous forest. The entire fauna can be found uh, in the entire uh, deciduous forest. The fauna generally can uh, can be found is common animals. They include lion, tiger, pig, deer, and elephant. Apart from that, abundant bird species can be seen, and uh, species like lizards, snakes, and the tortoises. We can find these species also in these type of. forest so here you can see the uh, dry deciduous forest dry deciduous forest right next category uh, third category we can say thorn or uh, thorn forest or scrubs they are found in regions where the rainfall is less than 70 cm so they are characterized by thorny trees and bushes predominantly located in the northwestern part of india so you can say the north west uh, northwestern part of india especially the rajasthan area and some parts of the gujarat they receive very less rainfall rainfall so they exhibit desert like conditions even the thar desert that is located in rajasthan so in the in those regions we can find the thorn forest or scrub forest so including western uh, parts of india including uh, some regions of arid regions of gujarat rajasthan and even it extends to somewhat extends to states of madhya pradesh chhattisgarh uttar pradesh and haryana right vegetation what uh, the types of vegetation that can be find there is main species include acacias palms euphorbias and cacti so these types of plant species can be found here trees are scattered with long roots penetrating deep into the soil for moisture so because uh, water is less available here the trees develop deep roots to access the ground water and also the spread of the trees is very scanty because the i mean because of the less availability of the water right stems are succulent to conserve the water so in the stems if you see some we can say cacti species the stem is green and we can say the uh, we can say a uh, lot of gap in the stem stem so this area is used for storing the water storing the water leaves are thick and small to minimize evaporation so these are we can say these are the adaptive features uh, speech, uh, features for the tree species that are generally located in the arid regions so these forest types they these forest give way to thorn forest and the scrub forest in the region and if you understand the fauna there so common animals include rat mice rabbits foxes wolves tigers etc right so these are the some of the animals found there especially we can see the camels also we can see there because they are most suitable for the 
desert regions and arid regions right. here you can see the forest type of plant right. so thorn for thorn trees are predominantly located here next important uh, type of forest you can say the fourth type of forest that is mountain forest so in it is found in mountain areas uh, the temperature in mountain areas the temperature decreases with increasing altitude leading to changes in natural vegetation so if you see the himalayas it is characterized by characterized by lot of parallel ranges so in these forest regions as you reach the upper highs upper highs the temperature will be decreasing because of the we can say uh, as you go uh, i mean upper in the atm atmosphere the general rule is that the temperature will be decreasing so because of that decreasing temperature you will uh, find different types of natural vegetation on the mountain regions right so there we can see a succession of vegetation belts from tropical to tundra regions so this characteristic feature we can find especially in himalayas all right further we can divide the uh, based on altitude and the type of vegetation we can divide the mountain mountain forest into three sub categories those are first one is wet temperate forest so this type of forest is characterized between 1000 to 2000 meters high right so found in 1000 to 200 meet, meters altitude predominantly evergreen broadleaf trees like oaks and chestnuts so here uh in this area we can say we can find these type of forest the characteristic features are we can find evergreen broad leaves trees like oaks and chestnuts next category is temperate forest so the altitude is generally 1500 to 300 meters so they can be find or uh, they are located between uh, 1500 to 3000 meters altitude so they contain coniferous trees such as pine deodar silver fir spruce and cedar so coniferous forests you might be knowing the features because the trees are shaped in a cone shape right because whenever the we can say snowfall is there the snow uh, should not be i mean remain on the leaves of the plant it is dangerous for the tree so because to shed the we can say uh we can say uh, uh fall of the snow because of this reason the shape of the tree is in a shape of the tree is in a cone shape so because of this reason we call this as coniferous forest also right so this uh, i mean region if you see it mostly covers the southern slopes of the himalayas and the high altitude areas in southern and the northeast india right so in the high areas of the western ghats topmost we can say topmost region of western ghats also we can find this type of forest and also in some regions of north uh, northeast india also we can find this uh, type of forest right next type of vegetation is alpine vegetation right so it is located above the 3000 3600 meters altitude so above 3600 meters altitude temperate forest and the grasslands transition into alpine vegetation so if you take himalayas in the higher reaches of the himalayas you will find these type of forest ads common trees here include silver fir junipers pines and birches so if you go to the himalayas you can notice we will find lot of pine trees here so this is especially in the higher reaches of the himalayas you will find fine uh, pine trees so this is because of the uh, alpine type of vegetation so the here trees become stunted approaching the snow line as we approach the snow a snow line the trees become shorter and shorter and they merge into the alpine grasslands right so here in this grand line these grasslands alpine gra grasslands they are grazed ex extensively by nomadic tribes like 
Gujars and Bakhirwas. So here you can find, especially in the Jammu and Kashmir, and the higher reaches of the Himachal Pradesh and the Uttarakhand, you can find these type of uh, tribes there uh, who are basically nomads. So they will be uh, depending on the livestock to lead their lives. So they will be moving. Uh, uh, below and above according to the we can say seasons so basically they are dependent on grazing of the plants if we find the uh, if we see the fauna so common animals include their kashmir star spotted deer wild sheep jack jackrabbit uh, tibetan antelope yak snow leopard squirrels shaggy horn wild ibex bear rare red pandas and many other we can say i mean wildlife species we can find so here in the image you can see the pine trees so this is uh, we can say alpine one type of alpine vegetation right. next one and the last one is mangrove forest or we also call it as tidal forest so generally it is located in the coastal areas coastal areas so uh, sundarbans we all know very famous one sundarbans it is the we can say largest mangrove systems not only in india when we combine the mangroves that are located in both uh, west bengal and also in bangladesh so it is one of the largest mangrove systems not only in the asia we can say entire uh, in the entire world Similarly, in some other regions of Odisha and Andhra Pradesh and also Gujarat, in coasts of Gujarat, we will find the mangrove forests. So they are found in the coastal areas, influenced by tides. The accumulation of mud and silt characterizes these coasts. So common varieties include dense mangroves with submerged roofs. So these are the characteristics. Geographical distribution, if you see, they are found in the deltas of major rivers like Ganges, Mahanadi, Krishna, Godavari, and Kaveri. Sundari trees, known for durable hard timber, they are prominent in Ganga Brahmaputra delta. So, here we can see Sundarbans. So, on the mouths of these rivers, we will find the Sundarbans mangroves. Other species, Sundari is one particular species there. So because of that particular Sundari tree only, the Sundarbans, name Sundarbans has come. Other important trees include palm, coconut, kiora, and aga. They are found in various parts of the delta. If you see the fauna, so the famous animal, animal in the Sundarbans, you can say Sundarbans mangrove is the Royal Bengal Tiger. We have studied it in detail about the, this uh, we can say particular species when we were studying the environment. Other wildlife species include turtles, crocodiles, gharials, and snakes. Right. These are these are the variety of species that can be found in the mangrove forest. So here in the image you can see the mangroves. Basically, the roots that are visible to our eye they are called as tap roots. Now we will see uh, some of the questions that are asked from this topic previously. First question, it is asked in 2021. Question is, here the question is describing a particular type of forest. Description of, description of a particular forest type has given. You need to, you have to find out the uh, type of forest, what kind of forest type that is. Generally the options are, Given our coniferous forest, dry deciduous forest, mangrove forest, and the tropical rainforest, let's read and find out what kind of forest type is that. <coughs> right. The description is leaf litter decomposes uh, decomposes faster than in any other biome, and as a result, the soil surface is often almost bare. Apart from trees, the vegetation largely composed of plant forms that reach up to into the canopy vicariously by climbing, climbing the trees or growing as epiphytes, rooted 
on the upper branch of uh, branches of the trees this is most likely the description of which type of so here epif uh, epiphytes means a tree a tree growing upon another tree right so here you can observe if you go into the hinterland so a tree especially in the on a banyan tree on a banyan tree you you can see a palm tree growing on the uh, banyan tree so this characteristic feature is known as if it finds so these type of uh, generally uh, these type of uh, tree types can be found and whatever the description it is here, uh, given here it is most suitable for the tropical rain forest so all the ca- characteristics that are described in the question those can be found in the tropical rain forest so the correct option is option b so try to be ready for these type of questions also next question is uh it is about the we can say the percentage of forest cover forest cover so right you should be thorough with the forest cover also so this will be changing uh, gradually so in the current affairs part current affairs part you uh, make sure that you are thorough with the forest survey of india uh, that is being released for every two years so try to be aware of or update with the forest survey of india whatever the facts and figures will come out try to be aware of them try to cover them in the current affairs then we study about the current affairs the question is uh, it is asked in 2019 question is consider the following states four states are given chatisgarh madhya pradesh maharashtra and odisha question is with reference to the states mentioned above in terms of percentage of forest cover to the total area of the state so which of the following is the correct ascending order i mean when we see the total area of the state which particular state has the uh, i mean each particular state has what percentage of uh, its total area is covered with forest so the question the examiner is asking us to arrange the states in ascending order from least to percentage area to highest percentage area so if you are role pro with the you can say all the geography of india or you are aware of the you can say physical characteristics of india and you have brief information about the states you can easily answer this question so from the list of these states you can easily identify maharashtra is the most urban state so here you will find the least area of forest so this will be the uh, i mean when if you compare the forest ratio percentage of forest to the geo, uh, uh, total geographic area this state will be the least next next state will be madhya pradesh and the third state will be odisha and the last state will be chatis uh, chatis so here option c this is the correct sequence of ascending order of the uh, forest ratio of forest in the total geographical area that will be increasing so try to be ready for the these kind of questions also this is uh, it for today thank you thank you for joining the class see you next time until then have a good day